talk in L&D, we AI and chatbots and a whole range of approaches from simple discussion tools to full-blown machine learning applications. So before you start, Nick, one simple question for you. <coughs> Is this a simple discussion forum that you're going to, or simple discussion bot rather, that you're going to demo? Or is it something you need a master's degree in AI to create? Uh, it's the it's the former. Yes, it's a it's a it's a simple beginner's end of bots because you're right. Yes, with full blown AI, of course, that can be very complex, and you can spend a lot of time building those things. Um, but yeah, what I wanted to do today was kind of show you that actually you didn't need to uh, you don't need to spend all that long, and you don't need lots of clever programming and machine learning to get in on the chatbot thing. So yeah, it's me again. I'm still Nick Easton. I'm still Learning Technologies Consultant. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk about um, bots. Um, so, you know, we've seen in learning, uh, they can be used in virtual classrooms as assistants. Uh, and I've seen them used to uh, curate learning pathways. So, you know, they've, they've been built into LMSs to um, to kind of yeah curate and uh, you know list of courses that are relevant to to learners depending on their roles and to just aid learners to find the kind of things that they need the courses that they need um, but uh, less I think has been done less is that uh, you know putting bots actually into courses themselves so um, that's uh, that's what I thought I would show you today because that is possible. Um, what do we need to do to to achieve this? Four things, really. Um, I'm going to show you all of them. So uh, hold on to your hats. Um, but yeah, remember that uh, you, this is recorded, so you don't need to remember all of this stuff. I'm going to show you because it is it's going to be in depth. Um, you can uh, you know you can watch the recording later on at your leisure and build your own bot. Uh, so we need to create a knowledge base. So that's essentially that's the database of content of subject matter that you want your learner to be able to access. Uh, we need to connect it to a web bot service. We need to choose a chat channel and so that's just, that's the facility that the learner will use to access that knowledge via the bot service. Uh, and then we need to add it into a course or it could be just a simple web page actually. What are we going to use to do these things? We're going to use a couple of Microsoft services, so Microsoft's Q&A Maker. Microsoft's Azure portal. We're going to use Skype, but you could use other things. And we're going to use Storyline today to, um, as our course. So, first things first, create your knowledge base. So, we're going to use Microsoft's Q&A Maker. And I've put the, the URL there in the orange. That's Q&A Maker.ai. So, it's a Microsoft service. You need to uh, log into this. All you need though is a Microsoft account, so I mean, most people have got them anyway, or your business may have one. Or if you want, you can just create a new one. Um, sign in, and you will be dropped on this page, and you want to cr click this Create a Knowledge Base button here at the top. And that will simply load you this next page, where you'll see step one, Create a Q&A Service. Click this. So now this has taken us into Microsoft Azure portal. Um, and again, you need to be signed into Microsoft for this thing to pop up. It's taken us right to where we need to be, into this Q&A maker, create Q&A maker um, form. And the first thing we need to do is to give our Q&A uh, knowledge base a name. So I'm going to create uh, a GDPR bot, a GDPR learn bot that can answer your GDPR queries, if you have any. Um, which I'm sure people do these days at the moment, certainly. <clears throat> um, let's put the names in there. So I've just entered it into the top box, but it's also filtered it down. It's done this, it's automated this, put this name through these other boxes. You've also got this subscription um, drop down box here. So I've got it set to pay as you go at the moment. But there is a free trial available where you get. Uh, free access to this service for 30 days or $200 worth of, of use. And the use depends on kind of how many people are accessing it. And so if you just want to have a go at this, you want to build your own bot, just use that free trial. That's what I did initially. Um, but you might also find that your company already uses Microsoft Azure, already has, uh, uh, you know, a subscription to it. And you can use that. Um, scroll down this middle pane and 
we just need to click this create button at the bottom. I've also checked the little pin to dashboard. It's going to add it to our uh, Azure portal dashboard, which is essentially this, this kind of area here. So once you click that, it takes a minute or two to uh, deploy that service. And that's what this little tile on your dashboard is here. That's kind of, um, that's, that's just uh, submitting that deployment as it says there. So you wait for that to appear. Once that's done, it drops you straight onto this page. So this is still, we're all still in the Azure portal here, but now we need to jump back to the Q&A service page. Um, and we now scroll down to step two, and we've got three drop-down areas, drop-down boxes that you need to select things from. So this top one is the Azure directory ID. Basically, that's your Microsoft account that you've logged in. You'll see that if you drop this box down, that'll be there. It's probably the only thing that's there. Select that. The subscription thing, well, that's pulled through my pay as you go, but it would pull through your free trial if that's what you were using. And then the bottom box has in it um, the name of your Q&A service. So at the moment, we've just created one, haven't we? That's the thing we've just named, Brightwave GDPR bot. So add that in there. Scroll down. Step three, name your knowledge base. Well, it's got the same thing, Brightwave GDPR bot, and that's that will appear in there automatically for you. And then um, you need to populate your knowledge base. So what this means, this is putting the information, this is putting the subject matter into your into your knowledge base that your um, learn bot is going to access. So this is actually very easy to do. Um, you can add URLs of FAQ pages that already exist online. So um, GDPR, there's a lot of data out, out there on the internet about it. So the best place to go is the ICO website, the Information Commissioner's Office website. And yes, on their site, I found a GDPR FAQ page, and that's the URL of it. So simply, you just click this add URL and put it in the box. And as well as that, and you can add as many of these as you, as you, you know, see fit, as you need. Um, but you can also pull in data from uh, documents that you've created yourself. So you can add your own files. And these can simply be Word documents that you've created. So I've created one here for us. Um, you simply put in a question, add a question mark, and put your answer text in. So I've got two questions here. Who are Brightwave and who will win the World Cup? So save that. This is my document name here. You just need to save that locally and browse for it, and it will upload it onto this Q&A Maker site. And then you just need to click the Create Your KB, Create Your Knowledge Base. Click this button. Again, it takes a minute or two to kind of pull in all this information, but you can see it here, uh, the questions from the GDPR site and the answers, pairs of them as you run through. And at the bottom, here's the information it pulled in from our Word doc, who are Brightwave, who will win the World Cup. I'm hedging my bets there. Uh, Brazil, we reckon, maybe still? Could be. Could be Russia, though, maybe. Who knows? Senegal. Senegal. <laughs> Everybody from Senegal in the room. Um, once you've done that, um, you can click the publish. And it loads in this next page, and there's a publish button. They've made it all very simple for us. Click this button. And again, it takes a few moments for this to appear. But it gives you a bit of, excuse me, bit of embed code there. Um, it's got a few IDs in there that we need to connect all our bots and our services together. So um, we'll need that later on. Um, the next stage is to create your bot service. So this is something you do back on the Azure portal. So if we if we click on our uh, tab back to our Azure portal page, this is the page that it left us on before. We need to go up to this create a resource button to create our web bot resource. We click that, loads in this panel. You need to find this AI and machine learning option. Once you click that, it loads in this panel of um, products, Microsoft products. Scroll down in this panel to you see web bot, no, web app bot. Click on that. And it's given us another panel, a bit like we had for our Q&A maker service where we need to name our bot. So it's the same same process, really. Um, you need to enter your name in there. So I'm going to call it Brightwave Bot. Again, it's populated these other fields. There are some pricing uh, options here. Um, and you'll need to choose what you need there. But I can tell you that if you chose the top option from each of these, 
pricing uh, drop downs, um, that is the free option. Uh, we need to scroll down in this box before we hit that create button, and we need to change our bot template because what we need is not the basic C sharp, that's a bit complex for us at the moment. We need to click that, scroll down a bit, and click on the question and answer option there. Click that, select it, and it will pop it into here. You can see we've got that now. Bot template, question and answer. And then click the create button. And again, a bit like before, it takes a little while to deploy, but uh, your tile will appear on your Azure dashboard. Here it is. Once it's there, click on it. And in this middle panel, we need to scroll down to application settings. Click on this. It will load in uh, this panel here. Scroll down in here until you see these three items here. Q&A, 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 uh, authorization key, endpoint, and knowledge base ID. Now these things, we need to put in the IDs for these. And where are they? They're in that Q&A maker page that should still be open in our browser. So we come back here. I blurred these out because these are our IDs. You need to, you know, you'll be using yours. But take this top one, copy that, paste it in the Q&A knowledge base ID field. In it goes. Back again, take the bottom one, put it into the Q&A authorization key field. And then the middle one, the host address, put that into the Q&A endpoint host name field. So that's all done. Push that over there. And then uh, we're on to the next stage, which is actually to select the channel that we're going to use, which is essentially means that's the kind of panel, the chat panel that will appear in your course. There are different options you can select here. And again, you're selecting it in the Azure portal. In this central um, column here, scroll back up from your application settings up to channels. Select that and you'll see options here, Skype, we can use Facebook Messenger, Slack. Uh, we're going to use Skype today. So if we select that, click the messaging option here. And you just need to ensure that enable messaging is selected and click the save button. Pops up some terms of service. You need to agree to that. Um, hit the agree button. And then you're done with selecting your, um, your chat channel. On to the last bit adding your chat channel into your course. So um, we need, first of all, to go to the Skype developers page. So this is it, this is the URL for it, dev.skype.com. You don't need an account with this, you don't need to log in. Simply click on this speech bubble icon, it takes you to this page, and as it says here, you can add chat to your website with two lines of code. Scroll down, here they are, two lines of HTML, and you need to put that into your course or your web page. So, as I said, I'm going to use Storyline. So I created just a single page Storyline course, and um, this is the, the published output from it. I'm going to add these two lines of code into this HTML5 HTML page. But equally, if you're using the Flash output, you need to add it into there also in the same way. So if you open, that, open this up in your uh, text editor, we use Notepad++, it's free, it's great. You could just use simple Notepad if, if you have, if you want to. This is the HTML page opened up in your, in your text editor. So you need to scroll down until you see the body tag. That's this here, body. You don't need to worry about all this other complicated stuff that's floating around on the screen. Just find the body tag and in a space after it, you need to add in these two lines of HTML. Both of these go into your uh, HTML page, put them in there next to each other directly after the body tag. And then we need to update this bot ID, your bot ID there. We need to go back to the Azure portal and grab that and put it in. So we're back at the Azure portal. Again, click on this application settings and actually scroll down again to that same area where you had these three Q&A IDs and just above them is the Microsoft app ID. Uh, Copy that, jump back to your HTML page and paste it in here. Save this page and you're kind of done. Run your course, this is my course. You will now see that you've got a Skype chat channel little kind of icon, floating button there 
on your page or outside your page in your browser. Click on that, and here it is, Brightwave Box. We've got it. You don't need to sign in. You can if you want to. That If you do that, it will save the kind of chats, the discussions you have with your bot. You can just simply type in your question. What is GDPR? Here's your answer. Who will win the World Cup? And here's the answer we wrote into that into that Word document. So there we are. We've got a we've got a learn bot built into a course. Um, of course, what we've got there is yeah, it's a simple question and answer bot. It's not really doing any clever AI machine learning stuff, um, but it is using natural language processing to understand the questions that the learner is asking. They don't need to type in you know the question as you wrote it verbatim. They can type it in in their own kind of language, and the bot should make sense of it and give you the correct answer back. So that's it, all done. Thank you.